you make your last practice count, full practice count? Everything counts. Uh, <laughs> everything counts. Uh, good day today. We did some uh, out of the box uh, stuff today with guys just to conti continue keeping them engaged. And uh, we had actually players today to show us some clips and uh, to coach us and to tell us uh, what they're seeing on the court. So it was it was a great day for us. I know you were asked about your strengths and weaknesses uh, this year, last yesterday, and, and you didn't want to get into strengths. Um, is there something that changed for you over the first part of the year to now, something like you're doing more of that you didn't expect to? Like, are there one or two things that jumped to mind that you found to be extra important compared to your original sort of expectations? Um, I mean, start of the year... Uh, I know it was a different team. For sure, yeah. But at the start of the year, uh, I'm walking in and I'm trying to implement the system. Yeah. The way we work, the way uh, we do scouts, the way we communicate, the way we treat each other, like putting yeah. the culture in, right? So, and I had a, a lot of my shoulders, on my shoulders to start the year just to, to do all of that, you know. And uh, as the season is progressing, I'm relying much more on my assistant coaches to give me a feedback to, uh, on, and players as well and staff and everybody just to, to uh, continue to grow, you know. So it's uh, over here we don't operate in a way, my way or no way. Uh, we're all in this together. We're empowering our players. We believe in our players and the staff and we want the, all of them to grow and get better. So I'm trying to, to listen much more now uh, once we uh, established our identity there and uh, to go from there. So when you said uh, the players were showing you guys clips, was that like their homework to like select something and then show it to you or did... We prepared clips for them, okay. then we broke down in, uh, in some teams and uh, you know, then, then we, we coached players what they need to see, etc. And then they had to uh, do a little presentation in front of the whole team. So it was good. It was a good day. So they would then add their two cents in the presentation? Yes. 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 And they were also imitating coaches with the presentation. So that, that was that was that was special. Did anybody try on a Serbian accent or did they not? Well, yeah, they did. Uh, but it was not, not my, my exit. It was the, the yeah, Evo's and uh, <laughs> Kelly went with that one. Uh, it, was, it was good. It was fun. What, what was something that they pointed out that stood out to you? I mean, uh, we, we talked about uh, yesterday is uh, our game preparation. The biggest part was uh, guarding uh, their guard, guard, pick and rolls. And uh, I think Washington is top three teams in the league in doing that part of, of their offense, guard, guard, when they sit, set screens, when they slip out, when they roll, when they pop. Um, and uh, we had moments when we did really good job, especially that first quarter and uh, to finish the fourth quarter. But there were also parts of the game that we, did, we were not logged in there. So some of those clips were about that and how we, we can get better in that area. When you, you mentioned the other night, knowing like, you had that conversation with Perry about knowing when to, you know, which guy to attack or whatever. Right. How, how do players like learn that or figure that out? Like, all right, I should be going here as opposed to there, or just having that awareness. If he's a really good defender, stay away from him. Um, two things: it's uh, it's on me to make a play calls to get the right players in those situations, but also like it's understanding who is guarding you and get better of reading the game. You know. A lot of times, like the, 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 the pace of the game, you don't have a chance every single time to call the play call. And that's where elite teams, where, that's where they make the difference. You know, when you have the best players in the league, they're going to orchestrate that part. I want that guy in pick and roll, you come over here, etc., etc. So I, I'm really trying to educate our whole team on the importance of that and, and how we can get into those situations. How's uh, Grady doing today? Uh, he's sore from yesterday. Uh, he went through the parts of the practice, uh, but but he's pretty sore. And Gary? Uh, Gary is uh, is actually pretty uh, feeling pretty good today. So you're one of the few guys who's been here all year. So you're one of the few guys who can answer this. Um, what has Darko really emphasized compared to the first, the beginning of the year lately? I know there's like. The team is very different, so that probably affected things. But is there a way he changed or something he leaned on more later in the season versus the beginning of the season? Yeah, for sure. You know, with so many, we had a lot of uncertainty at the beginning of the season with so many players, you know, under contract years and 
um, things of that nature. So we know the business of the of the league. So we're really focused on the present and trying to win every game um, for this season. When when the trades happened and we got, I guess, pretty steady, I guess you could say, in terms of who was going to be on the team, it was more so not only this this game and the next few games, but next year yeah. and and future. Um, thinking about thinking about how we need to play, what culture we need to build for the next year, the next two years, the next three years. So uh, I think that was the biggest change in, you know, the commentary and, and how we approached each day. What's that like for players like yourself who aren't part of the young core necessarily and, and aren't on long-term deals here to be talking so, spending so much time talking about the future? I mean, honestly, you know, it's a, that, that's what you do when you're trying to build a program, build a culture. You know, coming into this, coming into coming to this team in free agency, I've been on teams where you have a, a new coach, and at the end of the day, that coach's job is to build for not you know just this season, but for seasons to come. Um, it's a it's a long game in this game, um, especially with the you know with probably your with your best player, your all star being in his third or fourth year. So it, you, you're, you're going to have a futuristic mindset, and I knew that coming in. So for me, it, it wasn't anything new. Um, it was kind of the same mentality that when I first got to New Orleans. Um, you know, we're trying to win every game we can this year and uh, every game we can, but we're building something. We're bu building towards something uh, at the same time. Not necessarily positive or negative, but when comparing to your other coaches and particularly first-time coaches, what makes Darko stand out as, as different? I think um, the fact that he's... He's straightforward with who's going to play each game. Yeah. I think that's one thing I, I said from the beginning. I love that about him. Yeah. You know, come shoot around or the walkthrough before the game. Who's in the rotation at the beginning of the game? And uh, that gives players a sense of, um, in my opinion, peace, a sense of calm. You know, you understand what, there's no anxiety. Uh, I think that's good, especially for young players, because a lot of guys, old school guys, don't think young players deserve to know. You just be ready regardless. So. That's probably the biggest difference. Um, the only time, this first time in my career that I've had a coach that did that, and I, I enjoyed it. What's that like for you in a game like last night? Where I guess he probably told you before the game, or what did he tell you before nah, the game so last night? I didn't get it into the second half, right. so he always said, first half, you know, this is the rotation, it can change, and it was second half, and it did change. So um, they told me probably two minutes before I got in, so I just got got a couple of hot packs, stretched, you know, what I'm saying, stretched my calves, my Achilles a little bit, and then got ready. Um, just given the fact that your role has had to expand over the past month and a half with all the injuries and outs, do you find that your words started to carry more weight in the locker room and guys really appreciated you because you were so able and willing to jump in when needed? That's a good question, Savannah. Thank you. No, that's actually very much the case, you know. Um, I've always been a guy that was, you know, that talked a decent amount. Um, and it was easier when I was playing because I could show guys, you know, if I made a mistake, I, I took responsibility. If not, then... You know, I'm playing hard, trying to do the right thing. When you're not playing, it's not as easy. You know, guys may say, well, you're not even playing. It's, it's, it's easy for you to say. But when you go out and actually, you know, try to compete and compete at a high level every night, then at the end of the day, they have to respect that. And uh, more times than not, they, uh, like you said, the words mean a little more once they see you out there, you know, laying it out on the line. Is that what happened with Thad at the end of his run here? Thad started playing and playing really well. And his, he said his voice, resonated a little bit more because he was out there no banging. With the new guys that just came. Now, obviously, Thad played the last year and the year before, so guys knew what Thad could do. Um, but the guys who, the yeah, guys who, but the guys who just came. Yeah, no Grady and, uh, and and then obviously other, other guys that have just come. So that definitely, it, it just is what it is. It's human nature. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's it's always easier said than done. And then if you can still do it, then, then you can say it. And, you know, if I can do it at 37, then they should be able to do it at 24, 25. What's Are you going to go for 40? I mean, I don't know. We'll see, man. We'll see. I, I, my body feels good enough to jump in after an hour and 15 minutes of sitting on the bench. So I think I, I'll be able to play another year or two. <laughs> what stands out to you about Pascal and his leadership and just when you're playing with him here? Um, just his his intensity, his, uh, his ability to... Um, you know, go all out, practice hard. I think the biggest thing with Pascal was his ability to show the work ethic. Um, a guy that came from where he came from, uh, but still putting work in every day, probably the hardest worker on the team. I think that was the biggest thing about him. It wasn't more, it wasn't vocal. It was more just, I'm coming in, I'm putting work in every single day. 
Um, and in my opinion, if if your All Star, if your All Star was doing that, then it should light a fire under everybody else. The league's changed a ton in your career. Uh, when you look at a guy like Zach Eady, who's maybe would have gone first overall, let's say, at the beginning of your career. How have you seen the league change for a guy like that at the center position? That's a great question. You know, Kelly, o, Kelly Olenek and I were talking about, you know, if you're, if you're a lottery team, who, 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 who goes to get Zach Eady? Um, you know, you put your GM hat on. Uh, and I would think a team like OKC would be a good fit for him because they need a big body and they got to go against the big bodies in the West, Jokic, you know what I'm saying? Um, Valanchunas, uh, things of that nature. But honestly, it's just it's, it's less teams that like playing with a traditional big center, even if you are very efficient in the paint. Because of the importance of the three ball and the importance of being able to switch on the defensive end. Um, but then on the other flip side, you got guys like Rudy Gobert that uh, you know don't shoot a lot of threes, but I think the difference is he's a little more mobile, maybe. So it's going to be interesting. Um, I think Zach is a guy that can dominate in the paint, and uh, it's ebbs and flows in the NBA, man. It's always ebbs and flows. You got two great centers playing tonight, um, so it's going to be interesting to see, you know, who comes out. But I think both of them definitely have a, a, a long career in the NBA. It's just a matter of who picks them and, and, and what situation they're put in. Do you think the teams have to have the balls to take them? I think so. Yeah, I mean, like, like, right? you like, you know, like I think about it's a gamble. I think about like J.B. Bickerstaff playing big in Cleveland, you know, especially even when they had Lowry marketing, they had yeah. three seven footers starting and they just that did what they did. Now, obviously, Lowry was a, a spacing guy and, and, and Evan Mobley could move at the four. So it's a uh, it's definitely, you know, about having the, the gall to we, we're going to, you know, because we know he can play. We know he can move. He's improved every year. Um, I don't know how many shot blocks he averages a game, but. I know one thing, he can score that ball in that paint. And paint points, the teams with the best offense score the most paint points in the NBA. That's just the reality. So it's going to be interesting um, to see. I'm glad I'm not a GM that's, that's drafted. <laughs> I know that. Did it go slow or did it go fast? Is it good, Matt? Uh, like the whole season or just here? Just here, just here. I would say like after the trade, or after All-Star break, like Game 28 to 20 went really slow, and then like the last 15 games went pretty fast, yeah. yeah. Through all, these, all those losses, this team it never fractured, it never like, split it apart, it never got, it, got on, each, on each other. Like, what's that speak to the group? Yeah, I mean, I think you just have, you know, high, good, high character guys. You know, the coaching's been good, you know, the positivity's been good. Um, you know, just, you know, we brought in a lot of guys, um, so it's kind of, you know, tough to just think it's gonna just come together and then snap your fingers. So, you know, for us, it's just about you know being professional, coming here every day, and trying to give these young guys you know the best experience that we can, and you know help share what we know, learn and grow, and you know, continue to get better. You mentioned the coach in Utah. You were obviously with a guy who is considered one of the better young coaches in the league. Yeah. What have you learned about Darko, and specifically, like, what would you say his strengths are? As Yeah, I mean, I think his personality and character is really high. Um, you know, guys you know, like to play for him. Um, you know, he gets on you, but he also you know, keeps it a, a light atmosphere, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that you know, just his style of play, coming from overseas in Europe, and growing up in that you know, style of basketball, really, it's, it's fun to play. Everybody moves the ball, touches the ball, pass, cut, um, you know, kind of all that. So. I mean, obviously, there's a lot more depth you can get into, I'm sure, that he wants to get into when, you know, we have, you know, a full roster for you know, a longer period of time where you can kind of get to second and third and fourth reads and, you know, continue to build. But, um, you know, that's obviously next season. Then. Yeah, but saying that, like, you know, there were realities behind the, behind the losing streak, like, that were beyond everybody's yeah. control. Yeah. So, like, how do you think... He managed the line between like saying, well, we can only do what we can do, and we're still like holding you guys to a, to a certain standard. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, you know, I've been on some teams where just the end of the year, you're losing, whatever, you're not, you don't practice, you don't watch film, you kind of just pack it in. 
Um, you know, you roll out in the game and you know, kind of go through the motions, but that hasn't been the case here at all. I mean, we've watched more film in that losing streak than we did, you know, when we win or whatever it is. Um, you know, so he's continued to, like you said, hold people accountable, keep people honest. You know, continue to build habits um, for the young guys and as a team, and that's that's been big. And I think that you, know, you kind of see that in the last few games. What's the potential that you're seeing from this group of players? Yeah, I mean, even these last two games, having, like I said, Quick and RJ and um, Gary back healthy and playing all together, um, you know, you're seeing a little bit of that potential right there. And, you know, now you throw Scotty and Yak and everybody else into the mix, and, you know, it's, it's going to be a, you know, a fun opportunity. You know, I don't, yep. don't want to call it like a blessing in disguise, but, like, when you have so much injuries and, like, guys who are in the main rotation out, it forces other players to imagine uh yeah i mean it does i mean it can, it can go a couple different ways though right because now you bring everybody back and now everybody has different roles and like kind of you know guys like grady were used to starting and, and shooting and having plays call for him uh which is great he needed those reps and he's really excelled and gotten better even since the month and a half i've been here or whatever it is two months i've been here um, but now you bring other guys back into the mix and you, know, you kind of have to re-evaluate, reassess, and redefine your roles and you know how they fit together. Um, so it's a little bit different, but you, know, you just have a lot more depth, a lot more firepower. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a good thing because, like you said, you know, the only way you really learn, grow, and get better is through game reps and game experience. And it's hard to get young guys that in the midst of a battle in the season. Um, so to be able to do that now, and now going into next year to have that under your belt really helps. You played against Zach Eady, I think, with the Canadians. What's it like playing against a guy like that? Yeah, I mean, he's a big body. Obviously, it's different playing against someone like that in the spacing and dynamics of the NBA than the spacing and dynamics of college. Um, you know, you can kind of just sit in the paint. There's a lot of post-ups, keys narrow, like all that kind of stuff. But um, you know, Zach's a really, really good player, you know, and he's gotten a lot better. I've said this to numerous people. You know, he's gotten a lot, lot better over the last three years, four years since I've known him. Um, you know, his body has improved, you know, his speed, balance, quickness, um, you know, his strength, his functional strength has improved, um, his skill. Um, but for me, I mean, a lot of his IQ has improved, you know, his basketball IQ. So, yeah, I mean, he's a really good player, and, you know, obviously he's a force down low on the glass, in the paint, uh, blocking shots. You know, he really alters and changes the dynamics of the game. Um, so it'll, it'll be fun to watch him tonight. You know, a few years ago or whatever, he might have been like the number one pick in the draft. You know, there are questions about him as an NBA prospect. How do you see, you know, in this modern league, uh, a guy like that transition? You touched on a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's a different game. Um, you know, it's a lot of spacing, a lot of quickness, a lot of one through five pick and roll, you got to be able to kind of be out on the perimeter, move your feet, do this, that, but um, there's definitely a, a spot for him. Um, you know, there's guys in his NBA, you know, you need size to guard certain people at some times, situationally, but, you know, he's, he's going to be a force and a load on either end of the floor, no matter what you do, and, you know, you, you can run different schemes and stuff to, to make it work. Um, it's just whether it's how dedicated you are to it. Thanks for watching the Toronto Raptors YouTube channel. Check out our latest videos and subscribe for more. Trent answers back. Gary, Gary sidestep. Three.